show. Hello, hello. We, um... I, um... Can I, can I be honest with you? For, can I be honest with you guys for just once a second? I, I want you to like me. I don't need you to like me. I, I try not to read too much of the stuff that I mean. I like the good, some bad, some goods, all fine. I, I am fully aware of how crazy my hair is these days. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for those notes. <laughs> I appreciate it. Big day today, my friends. Very excited about the show tonight. But before we delve into it, I want to I want to deal with something that happened yesterday. And if you watched the show last night, bless you. It was very my favorite. You may remember we talked about the controversy over Justin Trudeau dropping the F-bomb. We know that, right? And you may have seen today that the Huffington Post Canada ran a little story about how he also cussed while in the red chair. Did he or didn't he? You'll have to watch the show tonight. Swearing is all over the news. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy to me. It's wild to me that in this era, we still talk about swearing. At CBC, we have a swear jar. Um, People talk about how, oh, CBC runs on taxpayer dollars. No, I fund it with my swear jar. <laughs> That's how we do it. See his 50 bucks right here? That's from Peter Mansbridge. <laughs> Last week, there was $150 in here from Don Cherry, and he was only in the room for 15 minutes. <laughs> This is, uh, this is from, uh, from Mama Yama. She doesn't swear a lot. She's just very charitable. Um, General Hospital turns 51 years old today. Happy birthday. 51 years of scandal, of steam, of plot lines stranger than a David Cronenberg film. 51 years of an afternoon, evening gown wearing, of condescending commercials for cleaning products. 51 years... That's how I learned about women, and I think I have a healthy view. <laughs> I like to honor the good fictional people of Port Charles, okay? The same way that I always do, by reacting to real life headlines with my very best, very best soap opera face. <laughs> Ontario's sunshine list may drive salaries up. Former flagship chapter store is shutting down. <laughs> I don't know how that one works. Don't you wish that we had a soap opera every day here in Toronto? Oh, wait, we do. Rob Ford, yeah. <laughs> yeah we sure do. It's a long campaign. We'll see how it goes. Uh, we know that we are into April now. We know that, right? It's important. One thing off the top. April is Autism Awareness Month. Tomorrow is World Autism Awareness Day. Autism is not just one thing. It's a range of different challenges for different people affecting social communication, social interaction, and social imagination. It's a spectrum, and around 1 in 100 people find themselves somewhere on it. For some, it is severe. For others, even close to them, may not know the small ways that it can impact their life. It is definitely something worth learning about, okay? One way is to get involved tomorrow through Light It Up Blue, which is a global initiative where iconic landmarks across the globe shine blue. So to the person, whomever she or he is that I assume live at the top of the CN Tower in Toronto, <laughs> to the person who lives in the Calgary Tower, to the person who lights up that place to, where the football team plays in Vancouver, what do you call it now? Light It Blue. Light It Blue. Show your support, or rock your blue shirt, rock your blue jeans. If you're sitting there going, I don't know, can I wear the Canadian tuxedo? Can I go denim on denim? Yes, you can. <laughs> you can go denim on denim on denim, baby. <laughs> you can do it, okay? But listening to Eiffel 65's hit from the 90s, blue daddy, blue da, blah, blah, that does not count. <laughs> Autism Awareness Day, super important. Check it out, strombo.com. We've got some more ideas on how you can get involved. Let's deal with the day. <laughs> I would, like to, uh, I would like to whip a little science out there for you, as the Beastie Boys say, kick a little knowledge. How do you strike back at the homophobes? Through technology. Check out this graph that I made with no basis in fact whatsoever. <laughs> Computer knowledge, high. Hatred of the gays, low. That's how it works, okay? There is, however, some blowback on the web for traditional marriage defense. So Brandon Ike, I don't know if you know this guy, Brandon Ike, one of the co-founders of Mozilla, so in 2008, he donated $1,000 to California's Prop 8, which passed defining marriage as between one man and one woman. 
Well, last week, this is why it's in the news, he was named as the new CEO of Mozilla, which left some people less than happy, including the dating website OkCupid. Now, if you log on to OkCupid using Firefox, you'll be greeted with this message. You can't read it? Let me give you time to get your glasses. No, it urges customers to use another browser. Despite the fact that Mozilla as a company has stated they believe in equality, right? However, it is not the words that matter. It's not the words that matter. It's the actions that matter. The F word as an adjective, not so good. As a verb, amazing. <laughs> words matter. Actions matter. There are calls from within the company. I don't know why I said that out loud. There are calls <laughs> from within. Uh, it's a good thing that I'm going to Hockey Night in Canada because they need some of that. Um, no, they don't. They've already got it. Never mind. So I don't know if he's going to step down. I don't know, if it, I don't know what the, the reality is going to be for him. It would be interesting if six years ago he said, hey, look, I made a mistake, and I apologize, and I stand, and stand up for what, I, you know, for what I am now as opposed to what I've done. Step in the right direction. It's important for the shareholders of the company, by the way. After all, how can investors have faith in the head of a tech-heavy company like Mozilla when this graph clearly shows that's a mistake? <laughs> Liberal government is living up to its name. They announced today a proposal to place LCBO kiosks in 10 Ontario grocery stores, letting them sell beer, wine, and spirits. And if you believe the church lady at the major Toronto intersection, this will be followed by the absolute breakdown of society into <laughs> lawless roving bands of drunken anarchists. I don't drink, and I don't drink because, uh, well, it's exposed my vulnerable dance moves. <laughs> Because suddenly it gave me moves like Jägermeister, moves like Jägermeister, and that was no fun for anybody, all right? <laughs> and before we raise our arms in fear, you know, that finding wine next to the waffles will lead to the unseeming of our social fabric, may I remind you the privately owned beer store monopoly needs to be looked at? How about Quebec offering the purchase of wine and beer within supermarkets and depeneurs, right? Very, depeneur, very classy way to say corner store. Everything seems to be fine in Quebec. In fact, they're growing so well, they might even be their own country someday. Beautiful Newfoundland and Labrador corner stores can sell locally brewed beer. And British Columbia Attorney General Suzanne Anton uh, introduced amendments to her province's Liquor Control and Licensing Act earlier this month that'll get booze in the grocery store by 2015. And the last time I checked, none of those places have been swallowed up by a hellmouth. And anything that encourages some men to get into grocery shopping, I am for. <laughs> I think it's a fantastic way. That's your debrief.